Hello dearest friends of mine, for today's video we have the new Dior Highlight Formula. Dior's been popping off lately, okay? I'm wearing the Romantic Voyage Quint, which I'm gonna do like a mini demo review of, so just check the timestamps in this video uh, if you are interested in this, but I'm so excited. So this is a true first impressions. I haven't tried these before. I haven't had the time yet, so we're gonna do it on camera. So if you want to see my thoughts on the new Dior Forever Couture Luminizers, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I'm a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And a thought that I always share with you guys is that I love Dior's highlight formulation. They have like probably my favorite highlight formulation. And as I was picking out my highlighters that I own to do some comparisons, I realized I didn't own as many as I thought. I have two limited edition single pan highlighters. And then of course I have the backstage quads, which are no longer available, of course. Honestly, like everything I own as far as highlighters is not available anymore except for this guy. And the reason why I felt like I owned so many more is because I use these so frequently. So my comparisons might not be the best, but I'll do the best that I can. But the main focus is on these new Forever Couture Luminizers, and I got three shades. By the way, I love ordering from Dior's website because it always comes so beautifully wrapped with a Christian Dior ribbon. It's the presentation, like that's the luxury experience that we pay for. However, returning things are a pain in the butt, so it's like a risk but I ordered online. I haven't even opened them. So they come in these boxes. So I picked up three shades. There are six total. As of right now, they seem to only be available on the Dior website. And these are a long wear highlighter with 95% natural origin pigments, whatever that means. Taking a look at the description, anything kind of unique and noteworthy that they say. It's supposed to give an iridescent finish that boosts complexion's radiance. It's supposed to give a multi-dimensional glow. And then all of the other highlight things that all highlights claim to do. So I picked up three shades, like I said. I picked up the numbers one, two, and three. So the three lightest shades, they all come in the same Dior box. And the packaging, it's this white compact that they've been coming out with. It's so pretty. It matches the Forever Natural Bronze. They have a powder that I just love this line of packaging. I mean, I like the silver, don't get me wrong, but I like this too. Eh, it's not slimmer. Actually, this is like the nude skin highlighters. It's a limited edition color, but you can see it's a little bit thinner, but these aren't too, too bad. So let's see, I have the first color here. I'm gonna show you. This is Nude Glow. So this one I think is going to be the most universal. So let me open up everything and make sure that nothing came broken. Nude Glow, by the way, is described as a golden bronze. Number two is Pink Glow. Really pretty. This is a radiant pink. And then number three, I wasn't originally going to pick this up, but the description sold me. I always complain that I do not like white highlights. You can see the little Dior embossment in it. This is called Pearlescent Glow. And the reason that I picked this up, because I normally would not pick up a white looking highlight, is because this is described as a diamond sheen. I like diamonds. That sounded real nice. Let's take a look at the swatches. So let me feel it first. Okay, it's not too creamy. It doesn't have like a really wet consistency. It has a drier but very smooth consistency. So here's Nude Glow Swatch. Smooth but not creamy, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel wet. That looks like I'm gonna love it. I feel like this is probably going to be the most universal color. Let's get Pink Glow. Pink Glow is below. It's a bit brighter, so if you have a more fair skin tone, you might like that one. And the last one, the one I'm probably gonna regret, Pearlescent Glow. This one feels a little bit more smooth, a little bit more silica-y. I don't know. Okay, this reminds me a little bit of that Fenty Diamond Glow one, where it almost has a sheer base and it's about the glimmer. And you can see that this does have sparkles to it that the top two do not have. I don't know how much I love that, but here are what the three swatches look like. You can see, as far as the three that I picked up, the nude glow on top here definitely has the deepest cast. 
I will say the following three shades definitely look like they'd be for more medium to deep skin tones. I'm liking the range that I'm seeing. Now, I haven't seen them in person, but it looks like a pretty good highlighter range. Anyways, I'm gonna apply them and then I'm gonna see if they remind me of any other Dior highlighters that I have and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention worst reviewer of the year. The price of these, they are $48 each. So they are quite pricey. And let's see, 12 month shelf life made in Italy. By the way, I'm on the website right now and it seems that all have sold out. It says temporarily unavailable. What? No. Yes. You're crazy. <clears throat> okay. False alarm. I checked today. I don't know if it actually was ever out of stock or if I, like, I think I was being dumb yesterday. But it's in stock today. There's only one shade that's out of stock. But it is available. False alarm. I'm so sorry if I scared you. So we're going to start off with 001 nude glow here i'm using my kaleidos h1 brush this is my all-time favorite highlight brush so we're getting no kickback here a little bit when you tap off the brush Mm-hmm. this is why dior creates my favorite highlighters of all time so smooth yep i i love that the shade is beautiful it doesn't create a cast this is a great everyday Highlight, you can see it is glowy if you like a really sheer kind of toned down highlight. This will give you glow. Be aware of that. Let's see if it builds up. Yeah. So the more you put on, the stronger that glow is going to be. It blends in seamlessly with the skin. It doesn't look drying. You can see the texture, but all highlighters basically emphasize texture. It's nothing too crazy. We like that one. All right, let me wipe my brush off. We're gonna do Pink Glow next. Are you ready? This one's gonna go better with my look right now. So this one is definitely brighter. So if you're a little bit more fair or have a lighter skin tone, probably like this one. Like the Nude Glow, I feel like is perfect for my skin tone. And this one's really good for my skin tone too. It's just you can pull it off if you are lighter as well because I think there is a chance the Nude Glow might be a little bit too deep if you have a fair complexion. It might be fine though, I could be wrong, but this is really pretty too. It's brighter and it goes with my pink blush a little bit better. So I feel like the nude glow on me is a little bit more skin-like and natural. And then the pink glow has a little bit more of a frostiness to it, but it is beautiful. And I feel like they are different enough for me to justify picking up both of these because I definitely feel like you can see the pinky tone, you can see the golden tone. And I love this formulation. It glides on so seamless like butter, not too powdery, it doesn't clump up, it doesn't emphasize texture too much. Okay, now we're gonna do what I've been dreading. We're gonna try on Pearlescent Glow. Not dreading, but I just, I have had this feeling that I'm gonna regret that I picked this one up because it has the sparkles. You see these sparkles here? So instantly, this is brightening up that highlight. And you can certainly see the sparkles. So if you are not a sparkle fan, this is not the shade for you. But it's really pretty. Honestly, like I don't mind a little bit of sparkle in my highlight. I feel like this is an intentionally sparkly highlight. They give you options in the range that are not sparkly. But if you're a sparkly person, this one's really fun. I think, you know, if you go out clubbing, anything like that, where you're in lights like that, this would be really awesome. I'm going to put it over the other cheek, but... I do want you to see the difference. This pearlescent glow versus nude glow. You can see the lack of sparkles and then the sparkles just a little bit over. And this almost works really nice as a highlighter topper. So if you are going for extra glam out for the evening, you want that added touch of sparkle. Honestly, this is great to put over any highlight. I kind of like it. I'm not mad about it. I think realistically it's not a product that i needed or that i'm going to reach for frequently but it's just as beautiful as the other two formulas the sparkles themselves aren't chunky by any means really pretty i mean it's a nice job if this is up your alley i'm gonna put a little bit on my lids oh yeah oh yeah now the shade that i have in the inner corner it is a sparkly shade too but this is adding oomph to the look. You know, I actually like this way more than I thought I would. I'm loving how it looks on the eyelid. 
I'm a fan of that. All right then, so as far as my quick little review, there's only so many things you can say about a highlighter. I love the formulation on these. Once again, Dior did not disappoint me in terms of formulation with these highlighters. You know, we have this pearlescent glow if you want something a little bit more glam, but the other two do not have any traces of sparkles in them. As far as my favorite color, I think Nude Glow is definitely up my alley. It's a little bit more golden, a little bit more wearable, but you guys know I do wear a lot of pinky tones, cooler tones, so the pink glow definitely has its place in my collection as well. Honestly, each of these highlighters have a place in my collection. I'm very, very happy with them. I recommend them if you are interested in them, and I definitely will keep you posted when these are available once again. But I did want to do a little bit of comparisons between what I do have from Dior. Now, I do not have their regular nude skin, I believe is what they're called. Dior Skin Nude <laughs> Luminizers, which is their permanent line highlighters, which I now realize I do need to pick up for references like this. So next time I make a Sephora order, I'm gonna do that for my knowledge but I do have a couple limited edition ones starting off with the Dior nude air luminizer in the shade hollow pink yes miss Mel Thompson made me buy this years ago but let's see how this compares so it looks like this oh this is a stunning highlight so it's right here and I would say it's a bit more white than the pink glow but it is comparable to the pink glow that's for sure so maybe if you have hollow pink, you might not need the pink glow, but this is a bit more white and the base of it is a bit more metallic. So this is from a couple of years ago, but if you have the nude luminizer glow vibes and rosy vibes, this was one of my favorite highlights for a while. I stopped talking about it because you can't get it anymore but if you do have it let's see absolutely love this paired with the very tiktok trendy blush right now even though i've been loving it way before it was brought to tiktok uh this i loved paired with that and it's actually what's on my cheeks right now but anyways you can see it's a bit more pink it has a stronger pink base than the pink glow i almost wish this had a little bit more pink to it but that's the difference there and this one might have a little bit of micro fine sparkles to it that aren't present in the new formulation. Now, I don't know what to do with these. We have a lot of a lot of these. So, I'm going to see if this one right here from the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette is comparable to the Pearlescent Glow and it's not sparkly. It's completely different. It just has that white base. Let's see how this compares to the Nude Glow and let's see how this compares to the Pink Glow, which I can tell this is Definitely way more pink. Very, very different. Here's what I'm comparing to the Nude Glow. It's definitely more light, more golden. And then the Pink Glow. See, this one's more white. And then in the Backstage Quad, it's more pink. I'd argue that these have a little bit more of a pigmented base to them. The new formulation seems to be a little bit less pigmented and a little bit less metallic, making it a little bit more wearable. And I think that... Honestly, I feel like it's a bit more of a modernized formula, just 2021. We like something a little bit more subdued that's kind of trendy right now, whereas these are a bit metallic. You can definitely shear them down. I think this is gearing towards more of like a wearable kind of trending formula. I also do have, you cannot get this anymore, the rose gold. I just want to see how this one compares. I feel like it could be similar. Honestly, yeah, this is pretty close to the pink glow. So that shade, as you can see, I pretty much can't tell the difference. So that one is the same. <laughs> I would go out on a limb to say those would look the same on the cheek. And then the last one that I have is the Pure Gold Quad. Again, this one's no longer available. I mean, nothing too crazy close. We'll do just for comparison's sake. This one is looking semi-similar and it's not at all, so. Yeah, very different here. I mean, at the end of the day, highlighters aren't going to look too different once on the skin, especially within the Dior line because the formulations are pretty much beautiful no matter what. But I will say within my own collection, I still am very, very happy to own these three. They differ from my favorite shades in my highlights, so that's good. And I mean, expecting that I'm going to continue using these, I can definitely see these being contenders, pretty much almost shoe-ins to be in my monthly favorites because I love that. So as far as the eye look, I did film a portion for you of me using one of the Dior quads. So let's get into that. This is arguably my new favorite 
Dior quad. So I wanted to pop in here and also do a demo of one of the newest Dior quints that I picked up while I was already doing the highlights. So I'm gonna show you a romantic voyage. Now, do you guys wanna hear the drama? because there was drama with this. So when I originally ordered this off of Dior, the photo for Romantic Voyage is this photo. That's what I thought I was getting, okay? I thought I was getting a nice neutral palette, the 100th one in my collection, with a nice black, and I was very excited about it. Lo and behold, this comes in the mail, and I was hecka confused. I was like, this is not in the picture, but at the same time, I wasn't mad because I, I like this color story better, but I just, I needed explanation. I need reason. So here's the reason, and Dior still has not fixed this yet, but there also is another quad, or not quad, Quint from Dior that's come out called Golden Day. So that previous photo I just showed you is what the real Golden Day looks like. And the photo for Golden Day on the website is the photo of this palette. So they have them switch. Nobody's changed it yet, whatever. But just know if you're ordering Romantic Voyage, you're getting this one. If you're ordering Golden Day, you're getting the more neutral one. Anyways, we're digging into this one. Side note, I filmed a video earlier. I tried the Cruise 2022 palette. That's probably going up tomorrow or the day after. I didn't like that one as much, but this one I'm feeling, this one is super good. So I'm gonna show you how I got this look. I didn't use every single color in here, so forgive me, but we're gonna start off with this matte shade right here. Unlike the Cruise palette that I tried, this one has two mattes. The Cruise palette that I tried had zero mattes. It's just like full 180 happened because I really didn't like the Cruise palette that much. It was fine, but now I tried this one today and I'm like, oh, I love it so much. You guys know how I am with cool tone purples. Anyways, I'm using an Isom S33 and you can see this shade is blending out beautifully. We're gonna leave it at that. I'm using a Tom Ford 11 brush. She's really fat, but I love it. I'm gonna take the middle shade right here. I was a little bit worried about this shade, but look how beautiful it is on the eyelid. Like a gorgeous lilac gray. I almost didn't put this tutorial in this video for you guys, but I just, as soon as I put the, it on this eye, I was like, game over. I needed to share this with you in a video. Really pretty. I'm gonna take an Isam W21 brush, and we're gonna go into the glittery shade. And this is gonna fill in inner third of this eyelid. You see how pretty and shiny and glimmery it is? Love it. And then I'm taking a Refer number three brush, and we're taking this light ballet pink. I'm just gonna brighten my eye up down here. This one's gonna be really pretty all over the lid too. Oh my god, this look literally took me like two minutes to do. Super easy. That just goes to show you the quality of this palette. It's the regular good Dior luxury quality and look how pretty that look is. All right, that's how I did this look and I love this Quint. I'm feeling really happy with this review. Very happy with the results of the products. So I love when I find a good product. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.